Hello, I am Sarah Millican and welcome to episode 87 of How to Be Champion Storytime Spectacular. Ta-da! Uh, I hope you're having a good day. We are in the middle of the How to Be a Comedian chapter. Let's just crack on. I think we should crack on with it. Um, I think we're near the end. We're near the end of this. Uh, this. Um, I mean, we're near the end of the whole book. I know you know this. We're not mentioning it. Let's just crack on. Turn up the volume on the audience in your head. So if something that normally gets a round of applause only gets a big laugh, turn up the volume. A small laugh becomes a bigger laugh in your head and a bigger laugh becomes a round of applause. Never comment on a quiet audience or low numbers. Don't piss off the people who came. They don't know they're laughing less at that joke than people did last night unless you tell them. Don't bloody tell them. Ignore chat if you can in a rowdy room but deal with hecklers. Don't shy away from hard gigs and tough rooms. What you learn doing those gigs stays with you and makes you more bulletproof. Jerry Seinfeld once said, you experiment in the easy rooms and edit in the hard ones. Watch from the start of the show if you can. You need to get the feel of the room and find out where any problems are. If you live and mostly work in London, get out and travel the country. An audience in Hull is so happy that you're there. London audiences must surely look at you thinking, you'd better be good, I could be at stomp right now. Try to see your friends and family. I'm not great at this. I try, but I work too much. I like to slot a friend in when I'm on my way to a work thing. It's not exactly a balance, but I thrive on my time with friends so that little bit of fuel before work is a must wherever possible. If you're a woman or a man with a tiny penis, get yourself a she-wee. I was once driving to Birmingham for a gig when a lorry jackknifed ahead of me and I was stuck for two and a half hours. After a couple of hours and with no idea when we'd be moving again, I started to really need a wee and became very jealous of all the men getting out of their cars and weeing with their fleshy she-wees, which is obviously what I call penises now, at the side of the road. Gradually it became painful and I believed potentially dangerous. I don't know if it can get so bad that your bladder just goes BANG! I looked around the car for what I could wee into and spotted an empty coke bottle. Being very aware of my twin jets, uh, <laughs> I knew I wouldn't be able to hit the top, but I eyed up the wider bit further down. Without any scissors to hand, I hacked into the bottle with my tweezers and sort of sawed my way around. The jagged top made me nervous, but regardless, I pushed back my seat and tried to squat over it. No joy. My bladder was terrified. So I did something I'd do again if I had to. I moved across to the passenger seat, pulled down my jeans and pants and did the biggest wee. Like something a horse would do first thing in the morning after a big night. I pulled up my pants and jeans and moved across to the driver's seat. God knows what the people in the car behind me thought. The rescue workers cut through the, end, uh, the central reservation and we all went back the way we'd come. I'd been replaced at my gig, so I just went home. The next day, I took the car to the garage and explained that my friend's dog, wink, uh, had weed in it and it needed a deep clean. Years later, I told the story on Would I Lie to You? And comedian and excellent friend, Joe Lysett, to whom I'd given this car, texted me, that's where I keep my sandwiches. And finally, the 11 o'clock rule, Millikan's Law, is great for getting over hard gigs. See page 192. We've already done that. Next chapter. Next chapter, chapter 39 now. Uh, why I'm not a criminal. You're all wondering. I know, I'm just putting your mind at rest. I'm not great at winding down after work. I don't read as much as I'd like because when I'm tired, I want something to wash over me. Hence, telly. I'm a huge telly fan. Some shows I watch are exactly like my life. People being funny, people eating cake or people sitting down. But I also like to place myself in shows and think, what would I do in this situation? I love a crime drama. In the first episode, someone generally gets themselves in a sticky situation. I've done that. You know, the usual things. Called a teacher, ma'am. Got trapped in a gig. In a, sorry, got trapped in a toilet at a gig. Ran over a deer. But in crime dramas, it's normally something murdery. When they look at their hands and they're surprised to see them covered in blood. That's a fun thing I like to do when my periods are very heavy and I get a bit on my hand. Something I've learned from crime drama is that it's always a bad idea to punch a hole in a wall, as pretty much anything that happens after that, be it a broken mug or a family murder, will be pinned on you and your rage. 
When my granddad died, I threw in a dress book at the wall. It was a spiral bound one and I damaged it so I could never open it again without remembering my rage. There's a lesson there. Be more careful in WH Smith's. That character then either styles it out, frames someone else or goes on the run. It made me wonder what I'd be like on the run. For starters, there's one word in those three I'm not fond of. You really hear people being on the walk. So that's the first part I'd struggle with. Maybe I could be on the run for one lamppost and then on the walk for another and build it up like that. And that is the end of episode uh, 87. I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope I made you giggle. Um, a little thing to tell you is um, I'm doing, obviously this book is going to end at some point uh, and that's what happens. It's just life. Uh, and some people have asked me to just read another book. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I haven't written any other books. <laughs> just this one, which I'm really glad you're enjoying. And by the way, all the people who've said they've bought it and are reading ahead because they can't wait for me. I mean, bad, boo, but also thanks for buying it. That's nice of you. Um, one thing we are doing at the moment is... Um, I'm doing an online new material gig uh, so if you'd like some information it's just online you can watch from wherever in the world the ticket price is super cheap uh, so if you'd like some more information on that it's called playground and it's every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. UK time if you'd like to watch that or you'd like some information I can send you some information if you email team t-a-a-m Sarah Millican at gmail.com and somebody from my team will send you the full information and you can decide whether you'd like to be involved and sit and watch uh, me and my comedian friends try out new jokes. Uh, that is, uh, this is the necklace that I like to wear when I'm writing. This is my idea necklace. I made that myself. And, and also we have a little on air sign that I put on when we, make, when we do playground in this very corner. So if you'd like to hear more about that, then please email team, just the word team, Sarah Millican which is the usual spelling, at gmail.com. Uh, and we will send, somebody from my team will send you the full information. Uh, so if you'd like to be involved in that, then that's a thing that you could continue on if you'd like to do that after the book has ended. Um, but in the meantime, uh, stay in the house. If you have to go outside, put your mask on, uh, wash your fucking hands, regardless, just continually. And I will see you same time, same place tomorrow. Lots of love. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Sarah Millican here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.